Uh, Bob Lesur is, is that how I say your surname, Bob? Lesur. Lesur. Oh, yep. I'll try and get it right. Um, no, I came fine. across, um, I got it wrong. I get, I get everybody's name wrong, Bob. It's, uh, it's nothing special. Not a problem. Um, I came across Bob's resources on an HPLC simulator lab. He'd written a really nice command prompt system to help his students get through and work through the simulation that he developed that was up there. And I thought it would be really good to invite Bob along to share what he's been doing because I found it of great value and have used it as the base for my dry lab provision. So I will hand over to Bob if that's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. And thank you for Thanks. coming to join us all the way from Yeah, the no, this has been really, uh, uh, really exciting. It's the uh, first time that I've uh, been at Dry Labs and uh, probably won't be the last. It's uh, been some really cool conversations here. So I, I like that. And uh, yeah, so we've, uh, I recognize that we're, uh, uh, we're mindful of time. So um, uh, we'll, see uh you know see what we can what we can do here let me just give a brief uh, brief overview of uh, of who i am i've been in uh higher ed for about 15 years started off at chicago state university in chicago illinois which is uh, in the south side of the uh, city um and then moved to western new york uh, suny brockport both of these colleges are uh, regional comprehensive institutions, uh, state institutions that are uh, are are geared towards uh, um, educating the, uh, uh, the the regional students, regional populations. You can find me at a variety of places. I do have a website where I put uh, uh, a lot of my information. Um, I'm not a huge social media person, but you can find me on Twitter. Um, and uh, but more impor importantly, what I wanted to uh, just comment on here was uh, uh, was that. My my mindset towards teaching has uh, has a, uh, a a fairly significant social uh, cultural uh, bend. Uh, my approach to teaching students as a uh, or student learning as a, uh, as student centered, um, and this socio cultural theory really has three uh, uh, three premises. Uh, knowledge construction happens by the student through mediation with other students, um, really trying to reconcile with a student's or a learner's uh, uh, observations of phenomenon and how the mind reconciles or 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 interprets those uh, 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 those phenomena. And the instructor then is serving as a facilitator rather than a content provider. And the instructor then does most of that facilitating through design designing some sort of guided scaffolding. So the idea of uh, generating learning opportunities uh, that are, are in appropriate bite-sized chunks to, uh, 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 for the students to, uh, to grapple with and work, uh, uh, work through. So as mentioned, you know, the, the big problem here when we were moving on from, uh, um, uh, uh, from the COVID transition uh, to online learning was how to handle some of the laboratories. I teach analytical chemistry to 50 non-major students. Uh, the students are typically environmental science or uh, a biological uh, uh, medical technician uh, program that we have at the college. And, uh, and so the students had around three or four labs that uh, we had to quickly transition into, in, into online versions, formats. And you know, one of the big challenges is finding the, uh, the appropriate uh, uh, virtual simulations or reasonable alternatives. But is, this is something that I've been thinking about for a little while. Um, uh, I used to use a tool called uh, the GC Simulator, which is at this uh, gcsimulator.org website, um, as, uh, uh, as an entry into teaching chromatography concepts. Uh, it was a, a really useful tool. It still is a useful tool in that it, uh, it provides a, uh, as close to a real uh, experience to interfacing with a uh, with the GC as uh, as is possible. Um, the problem with it is it's Java based, hasn't been updated, uh, and you know, uh, development essentially has uh, has ceased. So uh, a, a lot of the uh, the introductory material on this uh, uh, in in any of my activities was just teaching the students how to install uh, Java, how to get rid of all the security warnings, and just it. it it wasn't a, wasn't a good tool. Um, I did, however, have a uh, uh, sort of a um, 
a preliminary uh, uh, worksheet that guided students through this material. And uh, the, this was where I started thinking about using the typesetting of a document as a tool to get students to either uh, you know, do stuff, explore stuff, or report stuff. Um, and as you can see here in the upper uh, at the top, I've got blue italicized text to uh, uh, indicate the task that the student's going to be performing, the, um, the gray text boxes for, um, uh, for material that you're going to respond to. One of the challenges with this uh, or the weaknesses of this approach uh, was that it is very scripted. It doesn't provide a lot of opportunity for the students to just go off and explore. Um, they pretty much just follow the next step, next step, and then keep going, uh, keep going on until they have to submit the document. So there's not a lot of uh, independent self-managed learning in, uh, in this approach. So as I was re redesigning this, I stepped back and tried to think about what the actual goal is uh, and it was that uh, self-managed part. So at the core of this was I wanted to encourage students to figure out ways to learn on their own, um, giving them some sort of guidance through suitable scaffolding um, and uh, facilitation of the, uh, the simulations. Uh, but then also in that lower right-hand corner, I wanted to make sure that anything that I designed was easy to assess uh, and the students had a clear understanding of what it was that I was uh, 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 that I was assessing. So at the core of this Do Explore Act uh, uh, um, uh, method are three different uh, components: a script that guides the students through the components, tells them when to follow directions, when to learn on your own, and uh, when to uh, uh, be ready to be graded on a particular uh, uh, particular uh, component. Uh, the general, the content, obviously, how to access the particular virtual simulation or whatever it is that we're using the Do Explore Act tool on, and then a, uh, a, a rubric, um, having a rubric there so that the students uh, are fully aware of what it is they're being uh, evaluated on, I think is, uh, uh, is an important, uh, important com com uh, component of this. So the, uh, those three uh, components turned into uh, you know, five tasks. I broke this down into five learning objectives. Um, I'll get back to what I mean by the act is, uh, is broken up into three different uh, components in just a minute. The content turns out to be the, uh, the simulator, which, uh, um, uh, which also has, if you go over to that simulator on your own time, you can see the, uh, the resource that I've, uh, I've uh, I provided the uh, uh, author of the simulator was nice enough to host some of my materials there, and then also a uh, um, some additional materials like uh, you know, how to use Excel to solve for some of the uh, or answer some of the questions that I was uh, um, I was asking. The rubric broke down into about uh, uh, um, four different components: whether or not the students completed the tasks and the quality of that completion, any sort of evidence of com uh, uh, of comprehending the work that they were actually doing, and then clarity of actions is when uh, we'll, we'll, I'll give you an example of that in just a, a slide or two. Um, the uh, 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 this is just to say that uh, you know, I started off introducing this to the students with about a 20 minute uh, uh, screencast of going through and what I expected uh, them to do. This was about 17 minutes too long. Really what I needed to do was say, hey, there's this website, here's this document, go to it. Uh, uh, this wasn't a, a, a terribly, terribly good use of my time. Um, so thinking about making sure that the, uh, the preface material is, uh, uh, is, is quick and easy so that the students can just jump right into it. Uh, this is a, sort of an animation of, the, uh, uh, um, of what you see on the simulator. Uh, you can, on the left-hand side, move through the different components of, uh, uh, of the simulation, changing the chromatographic properties, mobile phase composition. We see the, uh, uh, we see the, the effects on the chromatograph. And then in the lower bar part, it gives some, uh, some metrics on the, uh, uh, on the tool, retention factors, retention times, and, uh, uh, and whatnot. Um, and, so the, uh, uh, the 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 beef of this uh, of this talk is right here uh, is is how we use the commands to guide a student through 
a, uh, a this particular activity. So we've got the two uh, two uh, fundamental uh, commands: do and explore. Do is essentially telling the students to follow an instruction. Uh, there's not a terrible amount of thought required. This is you know, you know click over here to uh, to set some settings, load some parameters, visit the website. Um, the explore is when they start moving into uh, tasks that aren't uh, um, aren't as directed, so they can uh, can explore some things like see how an effect uh, uh, how a slider affects the uh, the shape of the chromatograph. But there's nothing that's going to be reported in either the do or the explore. These are just things suggestions on how you uh, uh, how a student learns or how a student uh, familiarizes uh, oneself with the uh, uh, with the tool. The last three all encompass this uh, this concept of the act, so the actions, and in, and these are going to be customized for your particular uh, uh, application. For me, I wanted the students to either give me a short answer, which was a report, uh, create a plot in Excel, or write a uh, a paragraph. And so those were the three different uh, three different actions that you see in this. Uh, um, uh, in these examples, and those would be the parts that would actually exchange uh, would change depending on your your application. So here's one um, a screenshot of a uh, of a task. It's uh, it starts off with uh, uh, a goal or objective. Of what the students are going to be doing in this case, they need to look at a chromatogram and figure out some general metrics that we uh, we discuss in chromatography: retention factors, selectivity factors, and and the like. Um, a little introduction um, in this case you just uh, uh, highlighting the different components that we're going to be using the menus on the left hand side for example and you see we start off with a couple do's and explorers um, if we go back and take a look at the uh, peaks we see there's only four peaks at the very very beginning until they start changing some parameters and what I am telling the students here is uh, to recognize, to start looking at the tool and finding the things that I think are important, but then get them to start exploring and looking for things on their own. Um, once they've done a little bit of that, then they have to start reporting stuff. In this particular case, I'm just asking them to crunch some numbers, create a table, uh, or fill out a, 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 particular, a particular table. Um, a, uh, you, I had uh, about 50 students in the class, um, and in general, the students responded to this approach fairly well. Uh, I've got two examples of submissions here. This was a pretty good submission where the student gave me a Word document that had the answers in it and an Excel spreadsheet with the uh, with the plots, uh, which led to one of the first criticisms, self criticisms that I have in this uh, um, uh, in this tool, is that uh, as it's as it's designed right now, it's it's not as easy to grade as I would like it to be. Um, if we look, uh, you know, the responses that this uh, student gave me aren't as important as the mode of the responses. They just said it's part two. They don't tell me which ones they're actually responding to. Um, now, after grading 50 of them, I know which ones, that, which questions they're answering, but uh, for the first dozen or so, it was hard to figure out. And a lot of students responded this way. Um, but uh, one of the things that, uh, that I, I really uh, drew out of this that I liked was uh, the, the the paragraph that uh, that he wrote. Um, writing in this particular course is an important uh, a process skill that I try to develop, and we talk about a particular strategy for writing uh, uh, descriptions of figures that starts off with you know, identifying what the figure is, give me three results or facts about the figure, and then explain them. Uh, I've annotated this, and we see that he's got two out of the three uh, uh, components of this, so uh, so there's leaning towards uh, utilizing some of the skills that we've developed um, in the uh, uh, in the previous parts of the class. Um, I gave minimal prompting on what I wanted from the paragraph outside of saying write a paragraph like you've had for lab reports in the past, but I didn't give in any other specific details. When we look at uh, some of the higher end uh, uh, submissions, we see that all three of those components are there. Not only are they describing the graph, uh, the figure, but they're giving me some sort of uh, interpretation of what the significance is of the, uh, uh, of the graph. So we did see this of about 10 to 15% of the uh, uh, of the students. Um, 
So didn't get a lot of verbal responses at the end of the, or, or written responses at the end of the uh, evaluation uh, uh, of the course. Um, but you know, one of the students mentioned that they like the simulations and be able to play. So uh, that was uh, really key because that's what I'm trying to get them to do. Uh, the ability to play with them to see what impacts different variables can make without having to worry about the consequences or overuse of lab equipment and supplies. Um, uh, both this student and the next one indicate that they would have really liked to do chromatography in real life. Obviously, I would like them to do chromatography in real life, um, but it does uh, give me some ideas that uh, this would be a, a useful tool to maintain uh, even when we, when we do get to uh, get the students into the lab and actually uh, use, the, uh, use the instruments. Um, we run into a problem. Um, I, I've got uh, one HPLC and uh, two GCs that students can actually use and getting 50 students through the use of, uh, of, of three instruments is a, uh, is a, is a logistical uh, uh, challenge. And oftentimes what happens is the students are, are, are really just making a sample, putting it into an auto sampler, pressing a method button and then walking away. So that's not really using an instrument. Um, uh, coupling it with the, uh, uh, the simulation might, uh, might help address some of, uh, some of that. So in summary, what works and what didn't, uh, there was clear evidence that students were engaged in this simulation and uh, that they were applying previously learned skills. So I was really excited about, uh, about that. While there were favorable attitudes towards the uh, the topic, um, a, a number of students said that this was just simply too long, which may not be a surprise. This is the first time that I've uh, uh, I, I used this tool uh, at this extent, and so there's still some workshopping to be due to uh, uh, to clean it up. Um, the rubric that I use does need to uh, to to be improved a little bit. I think uh, in in uh, providing more opportunities for the students to understand what they're being graded on uh, will uh, will help them perform a little bit more. Um, and then you know, just some of the structural stuff uh, uh, to make it easier to, to grade. Um, so want to end with two ideas here about expanding this. Uh, it can go uh, it can be used beyond just uh, just simulations. Uh, I'm uh, I've just finished up developing a, uh, a way to use this for reading the literature. So the students are going to be, uh, you know, when we start in about two weeks, the students uh, start off by reading an article. And um, since we do a lot of writing, what I want is for the students to look at the rubric that we use for evaluating their lab reports and uh, evaluate a journal article based on the rubric that they're going to be graded on later on throughout the semester. So you know, this is just a little snippet. Uh, the students read the abstract, look at the rubric, look at the, and then annotate the rubric to identify where is the purpose uh, mentioned? Where's the approach or the methods mentioned? Uh, do, they men do they give you results uh, numerically or not numerically? And so these are the questions here are some somewhat guided and coerced to get the students to really uh, recognize how I want them to, uh, to write. So this looking at the literature, guiding the students through looking at their literature, annotating the literature, hopefully um, will, uh, uh, will help them become more comfortable with their, uh, uh, with their writing. Um, so we'll, we'll see, this is, this is uh, uh, been designed and we'll uh, see if it uh, is useful in, in just a couple of weeks. Uh, and then the last thing, um, I had a couple students in my uh, research group that obviously could not do a lot of research in the lab when we moved to online. So what I ended up doing is uh, um, uh, my research is in scientific instrumentation design using Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, 3D printing, CNC mills, uh, trying to make uh, research instrumentation broadly accessible. And so uh, I just unloaded all of the drawers in my, uh, uh, in, in my lab and gave students a bunch of Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and said, keep doing work when you're at home. And uh, Nathaniel up in the upper left-hand corner uh, developed a, um, an Arduino-based uh, um, uh, sensor to measure the power of, a, uh, uh, of an LED, a green um, uh, laser pointer. Uh, that we're, we're trying to use for a, a home-built uh, Raman spectrometer. And then on the right-hand side, we have uh, uh, Megan who built her own uh, um, uh, 
3D printed syringe pump uh, based on a, uh, a design that we published in the, uh, uh, in the lab. Her dad had just bought a, uh, a 3D printer, and so she wanted to use it. Um, and so that, uh, so the idea of uh, facilitating some of this self-managed independent undergraduate research using the Do Explore Act is certainly in the queue. And so that's something that I'm, I'm interested in, in working on uh, in the near future. Um, so that's sort of a, uh, a, 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 a blur tour of this, uh, of this tool. Um, and uh, I see that there's a little bit in the chat, so we'll, uh, uh, we'll move it to there. Fantastic, Bob. That's, um, it's really helped me, and I, I really like the idea that you had there of using it for the lit review breakdown. Um, I, wish I wish I'd thought of that earlier, because I'm doing my lit review lecture tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> with, the, with the students who have been using this simulation, so it would be a, it would have been a perfect match. And if I can write it up quick enough, I think I'll do that. Um, what we'll do at this point is open up the questions for both Bob and Alex, um, just before Ian does his wrap up. So, um, questions for Bob and Alex. I have a few. Maybe I shall kick off my my question for Bob. Did you um, did you run yours? distance Bob as in them sitting on PCs away from the um away from each other it's like uh the uh yes the uh the HPLC simulator was done completely uh, uh completely remote um the uh, any sort of interactions that I did were usually you know we use blackboard and so the uh, uh you know I would hop on the blackboard uh, chat and they knew to access uh, that they could get uh, get in touch with me if they needed some uh, real-time feedback but for the most part students uh, just worked on it on their own the uh, earlier iterations with the GC simulator uh, we would uh, uh, schedule some time in the computer lab and the students would uh, uh, would work on uh, um, uh, work on it uh, either together or with immediate guidance from a TA or something. Okay. And how did you find the timings to get it all to work, Bob? Because I'm my my, my un, way I've been doing it on my versions is that I I it seems I can get through the protocol pretty quickly, but I vastly underestimate how long it will take the students to do it. So I you know for example I set off a dry lab this morning, which I thought would be done by lunchtime. And there's currently still people sitting in the Zoom room on my laptop next to me, yeah, working on it's, the simulations. It's you, what, uh, you, what, what your it's a big problem. I I have not solved that problem, and that was uh, uh, that continues to be one of the biggest complaints. But uh, not just with this tool, but with uh, uh, virtually anything I throw to students uh, that I expect them to do on their own takes. Uh, much much longer than uh, uh, than than what I anticipate, and getting at uh, uh, getting at that uh, one of the is is going to be a challenge. I think one of the issues is uh, students working alone are not accustomed to actually talking to one another uh, effectively. So maybe they are chatting with a group me chat or texting or something like that, but they're not asking each other the right questions. They're not communicating the same way they would if they were face to face. And so that sort of very informal learning from your peer is, uh, uh, is, is not happening. So trying to figure out that, uh, that uh, peer to peer uh, component, uh, what it is that works in a uh, in a face to face lab, and how we can replicate that in a virtual uh, uh, setting is going to be one of the grand challenges of uh, of learning in the virtual environment. 